gonna be back real soon, really quickly. Just going to the toilet. Yo. So, um, I think once you should hear me, hi, um, it's one of, another one of those phone streams, this time with, um, this time with stream elements, I don't know if that works, I think it should, um, yeah, um, so, let me see one thing, features, no, okay, yeah, no, whoever, um, yeah, so, so, what do I want to talk about really quickly, um, I feel like I just had a very, very good, like, lightning strike of, like, combination of thoughts hitting me after one another, um, um, which are very, very much related to everything I've been, I've been wanting to think and talk about for a long time now. Um, the original, the original um, thought. The original thought. Fuck. More, more flow. More flow. More flow. The original thought was <laughs> I was sitting. I was lying in my bed, and just like I was reading, and there was this. I don't want to say instinctual, but like almost instinctual compulsion to reach for my smartphone and um but i just looked at my smartphone 10 minutes ago and i've just read like three pages of my novel i'm reading pacific edge the german translation of pacific edge by kim stanley robinson right now and um yeah and um so like I was thinking, okay, hey, so if I really feel this, like, compulsion to look at my fucking phone, although I know, I, like, know, because that was the thing that I felt when I looked at it the last time, I know it fucking sucks, and I know it's boring, I know it doesn't, um, like, it doesn't do anything good for me, I just, yeah, I just look at it, because I'm used to it, like, yeah, because that's where I reach when I'm kind of, like, bored, it's not the most interesting novel so far, to be honest. And, um, yeah. So, I was thinking to myself, okay, what if I kind of institute rules on myself? Like, harsh rules of, okay, 
no phone, let's say one hour before bed. Like, okay, then in bed, maybe like a YouTube video or ASMR or something like that. And, but before bed, like before, like in the, in the time I'm chilling in my bed, before I actually go to sleep, like no, no, um, no phone. And what if I institute this harsh rule on myself? And then I came to um, think about, okay, I've been recently kind of obsessed with instituting rules on my life, finding good rules for my life um, that I can follow. Like basically building out good habits, kind of like, like habits are, you might say like habits are internalized rules that you have like kind of like the compulsion to follow, you might say. Um, although you've, like most habits, like most habits uh, of course haven't emerged this way, um, that you have like intentionally chosen to like get used to, um, yeah. And um, then I was thinking about, okay, hey, that's interesting because like this entire thing of instituting rules on yourself, like instituting rules and the question of, okay, on what are they instituted and who institutes these rules? Um, I mean, all of that is fucking in... Uh, in political discourse and especially like super, super, super fucking confused versions of that in left political discourse, um, which is of course like now finally, finally fucking more widely and popularly contested. Um, most notably with, um, and like most directly with Rodrigo Nunes' book, Neither Vertical Nor Horizontal. Um, and like, okay, that... Um, because we have like these these old fucking and pretty pretty useless um, concepts of putting the vertical against the horizontal, and where the vertical is that where rules are instituted from above, from an outside agent onto like the organic unity of the movement of whatever like the the organic agent yeah like um it's like thought patterns that we have internalized that we can find over and over and over again most often they are not like explicitly explicitly formulated as, as such and that um one of my fucking like one of my fucking <coughs> key thoughts on this channel was to basically think about these things but on the scale of my own personal life and um, because and th there it gets like super super interesting like it gets super super fucking cool um, because once you scale it well like once you look at it in on the scale of your own personal life um, this thing like all of the complexity of that thing becomes like you kind of like can can get out the complexity of it, um, or like you kind of can access the complexity of it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go through it. And it's, it's fucking amazing. It's like a super good, um, you might even say like a pedagogical device in in that regard. Um, and um, so. <sighs> Because once you've scaled it, once you say, okay, hey, you use that completely formal description of like, oh, um, of like, oh, once you like, you kind of like institute rules on like an original organic unity of something. Um, um, once you have different agents involved, um, you can always like pitch one against the other and like pitch one as like the oppressor against the oppressed or something like that. And when you scale it down to like literally one agent who is doing that to themselves, it becomes more, dif more difficult. And later on, it becomes a little bit more complex because there never is only ever one agent. 
um, even within one agent, there are always influences of multiple agents already existing. Um, and <laughs> maybe you might say, okay, the fact that all of this is like agent-centered modeling, um, that, okay, oh, any of those actions has to be, in the end, um, be able to trace back to specific agents and like their intentional actions um, is like liberal and stupid analysis to, like because it doesn't allow really for emergent systemic effects and um, yeah but let's let's uh, like let's go this step by step um, this is really really cool so um, <coughs> because like the entire dichotomy between like oh vertical bad horizontal good um, is completely dissolved once you've as I said scale it down to the scale of an individual life and of an individual agent and because there is no outside agent which can um, institute those rules as like an artificial imposition on you and who can oppress you basically um, it's all you it's you who does it and you to whom it is done and um, okay you kind of like pretty quickly like you get pretty quickly you can't really even um, I think how, how would you say it? you can't you can't even really avoid getting into the into the weeds, into the details, into the complexity of everything. Um, because you already kind of like can see because... Um, okay, how, how do I start this? Um, like, you, uh, let's take the, the positive parts first. Um, and you could say, okay, because you are the one who's doing this to, to themselves, and therefore it's like okay the agent to whom it is done and who does it is one the same so hmm that's interesting how is that possible and then like it becomes more of like okay organization if you think about organization as this thing that is like the rules like if you think about organization as a rules um which is of course like also an oversimplified way of, of thinking about organization, but let's stick with it um, because let's stick with it for the moment because that which is that is which is most contested, I would say. Um, yeah. You might say that okay, from like the verticalists, like those who kind of like subscribe to the same kind of dichotomy between vertical and horizontal, but who just are not horizontalist, but choose the vertical side. Um, they might be the ones who argue against um, like horizontal, organic um, modes of organization. Um, um, but um, yeah, those are very very much like le le not the most <laughs> like they are not in the majority certainly um so so it, as soon as you scale organization down to your own life you start seeing it as like okay this is nothing that's imposed on me from an outside force this is something that i'm doing to myself this is like literally self-organization and then you could use this way of thinking about it once you've scaled it down to your own individual life and see like hmm it's like actually like oh th there i've discovered a way um of thinking about this of conceptualizing this that allows me to conceive of new actions um and of conceiving new um which I wasn't able to do before. And now I can use this model and scale it back up again to its original application of 
like political organization like movements or political organizations themselves and like oh wait when we talk about instituting rules and um or like if you say as i said organization as rules which is oversimplified but for the sake of the moment because that's what's most contested self-organization in like the organic sense is um, less contested and it's simply something you can't completely avoid um, you have to deal and best embrace it the most positive parts and tries to avoid or at least like inhibit and deal with the worst possible the worst parts um, yeah and then you say oh oh wait organization and like instituting those rules isn't something that's done to the movement to organizations from the outside it's something that people and like the movement like whatever you want to call the agent is actually doing itself and um so there you've already like through scaling it down and scaling it up <laughs> you've like you you've like built a model um, that is now useful. Of course, the mul like the multiplicity of agents is is um, is um, like something like that can be misleading. For example, if you talk about um, and I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. Um, but I'm going to tackle that very problem with the same mode of operation of like scaling it down, seeing something that I wasn't able to see before by scaling it down, and then used like this model that I developed of, of by scaling down and scaling it up again and having like something gained there. Um, so what did I want to say? Um, <laughs> um, fuck, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? I want to. I'm, I'm constantly justifying and methodolo methodologically explaining myself all the fucking time and I'm, I'm losing um, what I'm doing <laughs> through that. Um, da -da 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 where was I? Fucking hell. Um, I think, yes, 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 yes. There are so there can be like a misleading and mystifying effect of... Um, what I'm just doing of like, okay, you build a model by scaling it down, m modeling it. So basically you build a model by modeling it on one unitary agent. Um, and then you scale it up to where that, m to like a scale where that model actually doesn't really apply because there's like, m there's like a multiplicity of agents who have like very different relationships to one each other. For example, like those of power imbalances, and, but you still act as if it was like one unitary agent the whole time. Um, you might say that is like I'm using more technical, kind of like more modern language. Um, philosophically, like that, that, is, that is exactly what happens in philosophy when something like humanity or mankind or something like that is basically talked about the same way as the human subject and um, like yes every human like you might say like with Kant with Kant, uh, with Kant um, every single agent every single human agent is a subject and every one of those subjects in its abstract structure as the transcendental subject is the same um, but um, I'm not like even if we only see it as a trans on a transcendental level I don't even know if you could like take a multiplicity of transcendental subjects like embodied transcendental subjects and say oh now it's like just one unitary one um, if you could even do that um, I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I think even like the philosophical. Um, so I'm I'm lying here in my fucking bed in in fucking underwear in and I'm having like a better even th and I'm streaming on fucking Twitch with one fucking view and I'm having like a better conception of this trying to avoid the conceptual pitfalls that I've um, encountered in philosophy so much and I'm actually making progress in this one when I'm talking about okay model building scaling down scaling up building a model depending on one scale and then 
applying it on a scale where it doesn't matter, where it um, doesn't really apply anymore because you have like multi-agent um, dynamics involved in there. But let's, so saying some, like, and we also have that in our casual talk, like when we say like, oh, humanity, mankind, and act as if like, or like we, we um, also, um, we act as, as if this is like one unitary agent like I am. And um, as if you could like basically treat humanity as like parallel in the same way as one individual human being. And there would be like no real difference between the like, between those two um yeah and that of course completely eschews power dynamics inside of this supposedly unitary agent um yeah it completely it suggests an internal structure of unity and equality inside of this agent that is not given and adequate to reality whatsoever. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, but you can also, the thing is, the unity and l like the, what I've, what I've said in the beginning um, with regards to, okay, oh, even if you look at one individual life, like my life now, and say, oh yeah, there you have like finally only one agent. It's only me who's doing the, like instituting rules upon himself and trying to find good habit, like trying to find good, good habits and stuff like that. And therefore there cannot be like the easy opposition between oppressor and the oppressed and sh shit like that. Thereby every, like every single, every single, um, rule that I have to institute is like one that I, that like truly I institute on myself. Um, and we, like you could, uh, you could already start asking so many questions as like, oh, but um, what if um, the circumstances in which you live drive you to institute or like harshly incentivize you um, not to say like, oh, if you don't institute these rules on you, you get punished because you don't find a job and you fucking stuff. Um, <laughs> um, you might also say like something like, okay, oh, your environment is exerting um, environmental pressure on you, uh, selective pressure on you. If you don't conform to uh, the environment, you fucking die out. Um, Whatever you want to, whatever you want to, what, whatever like fits your, um, fits your choice here, um, but like basically that it like what comes through there is that oh, it's not actually me um, who's instituting these rules like in a somewhere if if you say or like my institution me instituting the act of instituting these rules on myself is not free you might say in that regard because i have pressure from the outside um because my living conditions like what um, the way i grew up like the expectations i have internal like stuff like um you could even say like and like there might be stuff that is more like okay obvious and visible and like that you actually experience as an outside pressure where like okay oh you have a deadline or you have like something like an interesting case like you have a deadline and you have to work and you have to institute rules of like workflow on yourself in order to actually get that shit done um and you really don't don't actually want to do it. Um, there, you actually experience it as a as something that um, like you still have to you still have to institute this rule and the discipline on yourself. But you don't do it. You do it really because of external pressure, and you experience that as external pressure. Um, an interesting, but you also might say might have like um, in. 
certain, you might also have internalized certain, um, by the way, am I still, okay, yeah, I'm still, um, okay. Ooh, the phone is pretty, pretty, oh god, it's pretty hot. Um, maybe not loaded and it gets, it gets like less hot then, okay. Hope it drops a little bit in temperature. Um, Yeah, um, I could also like observe. It's like like now I'm using the Stream Elements app. Um, if that makes the phone much hotter than the Stream Labs app, because the Stream Labs app kind of pretty like went pretty well. Um, yo, mushroom, I'm talking about um, instituting like instituting rules on yourself. Um, <sighs> like how to how to view that act like how to view that act on different scales like on your personal life in the realm of political organization um on the scale of like unitary agent multiple agents um yeah <coughs> so and what i said okay hey you might say like where you have like institution um Wait, what is the mod check? I don't even know. I d I'm streaming from phone, so I have no fucking, I have no fucking um, power over whatever. Like I don't even see anything. Um, like sorry, I can't. Like I see nothing literally with regards to like mod stuff and shit. Um, okay. To come back so there might be so there is the case of okay what the fuck weird um so the bros of stalin i i saw that um what's the two degenerate is it the hentai one or what um but yeah let me keep my let me keep my flow of idea here um so you have like the case where okay even on like the singular agent level where you say okay hey oh it must be obviously yourself who is instituting these rules on yourself. Um, um, it's not necessarily like it's more complex than that. I don't want to say it's like true or false because true or false already accepts the formulation of the situation as it's given. Um, yeah. So I would say it's more complex than that. Um, yeah. And so you have like the case where, okay, oh, you really have, like you are the one who is um, who is instituting this rule, like for example, like strict work discipline on yourself because you have a deadline, you have to hand in work and you don't really want to do it. And you really experience, like, you also really experience um pressure from the outside or you experience a it as something that you're doing involuntarily but you have to do because otherwise you face negative like you face disastrous consequences like losing your job not passing your test stuff like that um, then you have of course cases where like you don't you don't experience like pressures and stuff like that as external or as pressures because they have become part of you like for example certain societal expectations and certain societal protocols and sensibilities you internalize them during your time you grow up during the time you socialize with other people and um, you just get used to stuff and they become part of your identity the way you think and feel about the world and although they aren't like they don't originate in you um, they also come from the outside so to say and um, um, yeah and then there's an interesting so then there's an interesting ca mix case where, like, f for example, like when anyone concerns your own body, where um, 
Because your body is something that is at once you, but also not you. Because your body doesn't uh, like your body doesn't completely work according to your will. You can't just wish for something like for your body to do a certain thing, and it does the thing. Um, there are strict limitations, and the body has its own own inner workings. And yeah. Um, so, for example, when you want to, when you would like to do something, or no, no, no let's take the let's take the st um, the case of sickness or of um, health regeneration and maintenance that you have to work out, you have to eat better and shit like that, which is something you actually don't want to do, but you have to do because otherwise your body goes on strike, and that's like a super interesting edge case where like. Is that now outside pressure? Is that pressure that like I have internalized? Like, it's super interesting. So, um, what I want to say, and pro most of the time it's like a mix of all of three. Um, maybe the body is like the least of those, which is the least important one. Um, and but what I want to say, so even on the one agent scale of like, okay, your own individual life where it seems like, oh, the one who's, like, um, the opposition between the oppressor and the oppressed is dissolved into this one agent, and the one agent is freely instituting the rules upon himself, or upon themselves, and um, because it's only, only really one singular agent, um, it's never only one singular agent. Um, because the truth is, in the world, every one singular agent only exists because other agents exist. And every, every singular agent is through and through formed, through and through formed through other agents. There is nothing like an, a decontextualized singular agent. Um, so the boundary between you and society and everybody else is nearly non-existent. Um, society is already inside of you if you want it or not. You only exist because of society. Um, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that's important, that there cannot be a conflictual relationship between you and society, that um, you struggle with society, that like, and I'm trying to, I'm really, really trying to get my head around like conceptually around a lot of this stuff, which is um, like, how do I, how do I, how am I able to talk about it in the way I'm talking about it right now with like, okay, you are at once, like you are at once part of society, but at the same time, like on an, I don't know if ontologic, I'm th I don't think ontological level is like certainly ontologically it fits too, but I'm not even talking about ontologically in the sense of like simply, okay, yeah, I'm a human, therefore I'm also part of society, but more in a more empirical level on like, okay, hey, society is like the real condition of your existence. Like an ontological category is not the condition of existence of a case of that category. Um, um, like, um, I don't really know how to, how to really, um, I need to change positions on my bed, um, how to really describe it, but, um, like, um, <clears throat> how can you say, okay, at once, like, okay, you can say one, something about ontological level, you can say something about um, this, like the real conditions of existence and of influence. And at the same time, you can say, okay, for example, that there still can be something like, an, like you are not completely, totally subsumed by society. There still can, and like that's everything is a harmonious whole. Um, you still can be in a conflictual relationship for, with society because you are not like you're you're still somewhat autonomous. And um, yeah, and um, 
So where was I? Yes. Um, the complicated thing of like, okay, hey, even on the scale of like my individual life, um, you all you already start getting all of these complexities and the weeds of oh, okay, there's always more involved. It's never, never just me. Whatever, like never like an uncontaminated me that is somewhat pure, somewhat unoppressed, somewhat um, un uninfluenced by outside factors. Um, there never is such a thing. Um, and um, so you might say that some of the rules that I institute upon myself are lit are like you might say like when I talk about for example um, and I haven't done for a long time um, about self objectification mm, and self alienation um, you might say that you are like that oh okay um, that Good idea, good idea, good idea. A perfect idea is one of, okay, body image. Of, um, yeah, body image. Of, um, um, you want to lose weight. The classic fucking example. And um, you are really taking on this and saying, okay, hey, um, I want to lose weight. Nobody else said that to you you're taking that on and you can like <laughs> it could very well be the case and it is most likely the case that um, you are only saying this because you or like to the largest extent you're doing this because you have like internalized a certain like a certain ideal body image um, by society or by your specific part of society that you like live in um, there are more liberal and more restrictive body images like more unitary more diverse body images in different parts of society and um, yeah and that so you are basically act or like you instituting this rule of okay now I want to work out and I'm gonna work out every day or every other day, one hour, 30 minutes or something. Like in that act of in instituting that rule on yourself, you are acting as the agent, like as the agent of society against yourself, basically. And it's only society that is making you do this. And um, it's nothing that you really want. Um, and yeah, so that basically, oh, you still could say, um, you still could say, um, um, I don't, here's maybe the thing, here's maybe the thing. Um, that is making this so difficult. So I think the, the first thing that I have done is like, okay, you completely shatter any illusions of like, okay, oh, purely vertical versus purely horizontal and like purely an idea of oppressor versus oppressed, which are completely independent from one another. And um, um, where, okay, the the... Your auto time mod, a time out, auto mod. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'll just, oh, okay. <laughs> um, where, um, I, was, I was wondering where you were. Um, yeah. But what I'm like, how do you come to like a conceptual because like so how do you come to like a conceptual way of talking about this 
without taking like an idea of like oh the or the original organic unity um upon which um the big back uh, the big bad alien artificial order is put upon um how can you like because to be honest that's what's that's what the um vertical versus horizontal um discourse from the vertic from the horizontal perspective is um also how can you avoid oh no every institution every instituting of an order of an order of a rule um is by necessity and all the time only like self instituted and like in a way that's oh like basically it does the it does it pulls the uno reverse card on the horizontal versus vertical um idea and says like oh um the horizontal is in is like um intrinsically bad and uh, but basically the mode of like self organization the like organic original unity um is like something that's like animalistic for example something that's like mechanism mechanistic something that just happens automatically and not in a directed way something that's irrational something where people don't control their own lives but they are kept like they are like um they basically become enchained in this new emergent order that nobody ever controls like the market um um and that like oh no only only um only order imposed from above but it's not really above because above is also part of the of the agent who is instituting this or these orders on himself on themselves um and but that like okay by necessity every one of these orders of these rules is 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 better is is good um is inherently good um so fuck how do you how do you avoid both of these both of these simplistic things of thinking about it um still allow for the possibility of okay um power differences power differentials and um say oh even if supposedly you are instituting rules on yourself um are you automated again mushroom or <laughs> are you just not trying to uh be good to me and not derail me <laughs> um that like um also um if be pity <laughs> um that like yeah that you allow also for power differential that like you can say oh for example like certain forms of self object objectification like for example the weight loss thing can also be just um the institution often um <laughs> it's 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 okay it's okay um I'm just, I'm just trying to keep my my I, I think I will mostly focus on what I'm saying um and then I can go like once I've finished it, it's proving more difficult as, as always to actually articulate a thought that like literally took one minute to have in my head and now I'm at like 30 43 minutes to articulate to like actually articulate that thought um but I'm proud of it because it's like it's like it's like the fundamental thing kind of like it's like the fundamental thing um and you can you can really literally apply it to everything um okay rewatch the fucking stream like seriously it's not that long it's like actually good um because i'm like actually focused on what i'm saying and now i'm going to continue um so that um Yeah, hi, hi sketches. Hi. Um so how do you allow for saying okay, not every like rule that 
you like be it on like the singular agent scale or be it like on a multi-agent scale like for example the social movement be it the society like choose whatever scale you want basically maybe you could even talk about geopolitics i don't know um and like that you preserve the possibility of saying okay um a rule that like somebody institutes upon themselves must not by necessity be emancipatory in the sense of oh you're finally gaining control over your life um you're finally act like you were until now you were you were caught in these compulsions that you had societally internalized because that's the thing you can like like societal internalization can happen on both fucking levels it can be on the compulsion level on the level which feels like oh this is like the organic unity of like like my my original fucking fucking example of like okay i was reading a book and i felt like the compulsion to reach for my phone and um i said then to myself okay no how how about i institute the role in my life that i say okay oh one hour before bed no phone anymore and then like only asmr for for falling asleep or something um that like both of these both of these levels like the compulsion like the automatic compulsion that like just happened was societally internalized from like phone stuff and everything that connects with it and at the same time like okay oh this also the entire idea of oh getting your life under control blah 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 like certain images of getting your life and are also societally internalized and like there is no um like you can you can have the societal like the self you might say <laughs> yeah, yeah where you act as agent of your own oppression um on both levels like that can happen on both levels um that's like a new thought actually that i just came up with um for myself um so how can how can you have like okay like basically both both levels um both levels can be yeah new thought just dropped yeah yeah um both levels can be like contaminated you might say um by society um and at this oh, fuck how do, fuck i'm too derailed it's like really really difficult um so i've like um in the new center in the one new center um event that i was that i streamed and that i was in the chat in for i i wrote stuff about alienation and um the difference between alienation and self-objectification um and the difference between okay self-objectification on the cognitive level um and self-objectification on the practical level um on a cognitive level it means that um for example like when i watched what i talked about yesterday um when i watched old streams of myself um that was a form of cognitive self-objectification like i looked and what i mean is like cognitive it's simply like you look at something that already exists and you look at it as if as if this is an object like you don't look at it as like from your pov from your lived pov um that you see everything else through like that basically like things like like my like this phone that i'm having in my hand is an object um but like from my pov but that basically you make yourself an object but you never experience yourself as an object um so this has to be like there has to be a certain 
after like that that that's always like a certain artificial aspect to it like it feels it feels imposed on you because it's not something that's you that you naturally that you naturally experience yourself as and um that's what what makes it so uncanny also another form of self objectification could be looking into the mirror another form of self objectification is um weighing yourself another one is tracking your macros um another one is tracking your workflow all of that stuff is where you see yourself and your own actions not through your own like natural pov the way you see the world um but like through the eyes of like an like a disembodied other basically like you you, th you see yourself and that makes it so and um yes more and more analytical um and the thing with like the the cognitive self objectification is that it feels super 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 fucking uncanny like super uncanny because it's super counterintuitive um because normally in the world you you experience yourself as an agent that's making decisions and an object doesn't make decisions an object is just there and it's it's, it's only like it's only 3:30 a.m. so shut the fuck up um <laughs> And yesterday I couldn't sleep until 7.30 a.m. So, yeah. Um, and, but the thing is, like, only because you don't see yourself as an object intuitively in your life doesn't mean you aren't one. Like, you in fact are as much an object as any other object in this world with the difference that you ex you don't experience like you have experience this phone doesn't have experience and you d but you don't experience yourself as an object and you can make decisions um but oh god oh god not going not going into huh um not going in into that yet um and self objectification can be very helpful um because you for example um because you can see for example um long time patterns in your life like you can see like when we for example like writing diary and like writing a diary is a form of self object and then because like writing a diary is interesting because um Writing a diary is like very personal and very intuitive and like you write down how you experience that day but reading a diary um, either of yourself or of somebody else um, from some like over a period of time it becomes the complete opposite it becomes like okay a documentation of your own behavior of your own feelings of patterns of that over time oh god my hair is fucking i need to shower holy shit um and so but that's good that's good because what you can like you see things that were there all the time but you weren't seeing them and because you now see something that you haven't seen before, um, you can use that in order to change your life, for example. Like you see, okay, oh, for example, there are these emotional patterns inside of me, or like these relational pattern, the relationship patterns, or these behavioral patterns. And um, you only see them by objectifying yourself, but only then um <laughs> only then you can actually break like only then you can like um break out of them in like a deliberate way in like a way that isn't just oh it just happened kind of but like you can actually actively work towards that and um 
that's what I mean with okay cell like cognitive self objectification is the condition of possibility of directed self emancipation um and the thing is self objectification can of course like can of course also be used to other ends rather than simply oh you've now seen something in your life that um you don't like and you want to start to work on that um or or you've seen for example like you've you've always seen like, uh, like yeah let's let's take it like this um and um like these this data that you then generated and um can be used towards other ends can be used towards like by other agents or it can be used like um like the idea of like okay the neoliberal like the neoliberal subjectivity of like permanent self objectification and some permanent uh, uh not objective like also per permanent self objectification but also permanent self op op um, optimization of like oh i have to increase my skills here and there i have to i have to um eat better i have to sleep better like you track like you like basically you track yourself into oblivion until you are like the perfect subject and you have like everything everything's perfect about you and you never reach that state and you kind of like gain a certain pleasure out of out of like a perverse kind of pleasure out of this self objectification itself um because like kind of like oh you now like in the act of cognitive self objectification you now see what you truly are like you get like a certain kind of validation of your worth um that you cannot really that you basically lose like an in like in um in uh in in what the f intuitive an intuitive uh, relation to how you experience the world and what i said like with okay you have to distinguish so cognitive self objectification is somewhat a neutral thing it can be used for for good goals uh, for good ends and for self for self um emancipation um can also be used for other ends um so it's open for multiple uses um i mean you somewhat have like a mix of all of that shit for example like when you think about like fitness trackers and stuff where okay the way like it like it it kind of like it is inserted in a network of so many things of like okay the way like the way your data gets used um maybe also for insurance companies um the day or the way your data gets used maybe in like a personal profile wherever um the tech companies that like gain from it but also you also get like okay like you actually have a certain use from that fitness tracker yourself um so it's like a whole mess of all of that stuff put together mm. but what i would say um is a form of self objectification which is where i don't see any emancipatory potential is and with emancipatory i mean gaining more freedom for you like expanding your abilities of doing of being able to do stuff and for example like um yeah expanding your abilities and freedoms to do things um which is a very positive notion of freedom which is one that isn't simply given to you but one that you have to actively work towards and that is produced that's not like only like naturally given to you and then like others or the state take that away from you but um positive freedom is like the freedom to be able to do something um which is not naturally given to you which is something which is always like also historically always varying um which you basically have to expand 
and um, so emancipation is like the augmentation like think about it like the augmentation process as with um, as with Adam Jansen like Adam Jansen that's like yeah we Adam Jansen is gaining freedom in that moment um, you might say like okay it's it's a little bit more complicated because like of the context that his augmentate like his technical augmentations um, maybe his technical augmentations are like somewhat um, somewhat adjacent to like a fitness tracker in our times um, because like those technical devices and like our our abilities that we expand never exist in a void they always exist in relation to an environment at a context and the extent to which they actually expand our freedoms or you might say like hey you could say like oh yeah i'm um like both that okay hey you are learning a new skill um you're getting an education and um like you, after you've done that you can actually do new stuff and that's cool you can do stuff that you weren't able to do before but now you like you probably very likely not didn't do that because you wanted to do that <laughs> wanted to do that um yeah, because you wanted to do it but because like now you can be exploited by your employer by the fucking capitalist who's going to employ you and who's going to be your boss and but there then is like the ambivalence in that like be only because like you you don't lose like for example let's say you learn software developing um, only because now your capacity to software to develop software is is um, exploited by a boss doesn't mean that you stop being you stop be like you you stop being able to to uh, program software um, your ability to program software is somewhat independent from the fact that is it is exploited um, and so your capacity to develop software which is now which is just like one example for any type of capacity that you can develop whatsoever which you can expand your freedoms and your capabilities to do things um, is open to multiple uses. It is also open for like capture of the status quo and exploitation by a boss. Like yes, that's true. And in that sense, like okay, developing new capacities and new augmentations is also like can also develop in an oppression itself. Um, that you get only start getting certain education because it gives it it promises the best returns on the job market and somehow somehow like okay certain cyborgs in um certain cyborgs in uh, um Deus Ex get like certain augmentations because for example they are like um they're like assassins or they are like military operators or something like that that like literally we are through and through in our cap capabilities in our capacities in even in our fucking personalities like we fucking we fucking train our personalities to be marketable we are formed through and through by this society there is like no remnant left that is like innocent that is not tainted and but the thing is we have to we have to learn to live with that like when i when I yesterday, um, when I yesterday showed you the um, the Yu-Gi-Oh card of the Junk Warrior, of and I said that's all of us. We are all Junk Warriors. We all have to build ourselves out of the scraps. Like we are all scrap. Like we are all everything we have is the scraps of the society, and we are made out of these scraps. And that's everything we have. Um, I fucking love the. Um, I fucking love the. 
there is a quote by Nick Land, um, which is which goes somewhat like, I don't completely remember. It goes somewhat like, okay, um, capitalism or capital is artificial intelligence in way invading from the future which has to build itself out of its entirely out of its enemy's resources and i think we are in like a somewhat similar situation um like think about socialism the same way we have to build ourselves entirely out of our enemy's resources and we invade from the future having to build ourselves entire like we are artificial intelligence and um <laughs> he he wrote that somewhere in Fank Numena um I don't um I don't completely remember which text it was or where I read it or whatever. I don't remember completely. Um, yeah. Um, so basically, to wrap it up, to wrap it up, um, <laughs> like what I want, what I want, what I'm still looking for, and. Um, I'm not that even that ashamed that I don't have it yet because nobody has it because if anybody has it if everybody would have it anybody would have it and I would know it I would know of it I wouldn't be doing this I would like grab what this person produced is like a con like a conceptual instrument a way of thinking about like um like what I what I talked about with like okay instituting rules upon yourself and upon ourselves and upon this stuff, um, technology is somewhat adjacent is like structurally completely the same. Um, you might say like that yeah I I don't even gonna like you could say that okay instituting rules is a form of technology but you don't even have to go there it's like you can simply say it's okay there's like a structure is similar. Um, structural um um they're structurally similar there um to the extent that you can talk about them both in the same way in this sense um um this like okay hey fuck it's like so difficult like you do you, you allow for like okay ontological monism ontological monism um but still okay like okay um you don't make like the mistakes of um over generalizing a model built on one scale and apply it to another scale like and the the thing of like okay oh you are certainly part of society but that doesn't mean and you're part of society through and through or like you are society through and through but you can still be in conflict with society and with like okay um everything is contaminated um yet we have only what we have and we have to use it and um, instituting rules on yourself can be instituting rules on yourself as well as following like the compulsionary natural organic way of you would do things can both be um, like self-oppression and or oppression in, in the name of society um, or like both can or the other way around like both of them can also be liberating um yeah um but getting away from like somewhat simplistic dichotomous models yeah this this was long now and i'm i haven't been i'm a little bit more frustrated than I was in the beginning. Um, I thought this was more 
concise than it would be. Um, it's still somewhat good. It's still somewhat good. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm still very much not um, sleepy. <laughs> like, not at all. Um, yeah. <sighs> okay, now I do this. Yeah. I should say that, I should just say that out loud and I immediately become sleepy. Which video? By the way, my, I've, um, I found out my, my last stream, which was like, it actually had like a copyright block, um, and it was because I played the fucking videos of Blood, Rain and Hurt. Like the videos themselves were copyrighted, not only the songs, which is fucking crazy. No, not at all. It's like, um, no. Is it probably because it's like so like dark in my room? Like I didn't like like it, an hour ago. I had a cup of tea, but that's it. Like <laughs> literally. <sighs> I think it's like it looks more yeah it looks probably more lit than um yeah, can I yeah it looks more lit I think um than it is um yeah maybe give me a second do 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 bam This is somewhat adequate. Yeah. TV and books and LED stuff. Yeah. Hi. Okay, yeah. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to me. Um, I'm going to keep striving to, to find a way of thinking about these things that gives me better direction and, um, yeah. Yeah. I think this is in fact an important. This is, this, this is the most important thing the most important thing I could think about. Like, this is on a fundamental level, on a fundamental level of how to think about the world. Um, this is like the most important thing ever. Like, the on a conceptual level, this includes everything else. Um, everything else falls under those categories and is like over, like is determined by that. Um, like, you get so much clarity once you've, solve that one um yeah okay peace out um sleep well if you're going to sleep soon yeah peace